You turn to your neighbor and say, good morning, Unity. Isn't it a wonderful feeling to turn to your, the person next to you and acknowledge their presence and their beauty and their love? Isn't that neat? Appreciate that. In the meantime, uh, let's say our statement of being. You can be seated. Together, God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And on that, page 359, him. I'm not sure I'm familiar with this one, so we'll, uh, we'll wing, wing in here. Everybody's saying nice and loud nice. so that if any of us are wrong, you won't notice it. <laughs> We've done this before? Okay. I just don't recognize uh, the title. I don't recognize it. Oh, yes. I know this one. Everybody's singing from up here, by the way, and you all knew the song. That was great. Thank you. Uh, let's get into uh, some of our announcements today. I'll tell you what, we haven't done our prayer uh, that we do normally do at the opening uh, so that we can solicit the healing power for those in need. So let's, if we will, just take a moment right now and close our eyes so that we can merge unify, put our energy together, our thoughts going out to those people that we know who are in need of love, healing, joy, prosperity. Listen those out together. As we call out those names, put that, that thought into vibration into the universe so we can speed that energy along its way. Yeah, absolutely. John Nelson, Mary, mm -hmm. USA, mm -hmm. Dane, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm 
We thank you, Lord, for this power that you have bestowed upon us to create healing and peace and love and joy and the wherewithal, the knowledge to send it out to those around us constantly, continuously in the form of vibrations that heal, that make us whole. And for this we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Okay, announcements. Uh, we go into the blue section of our bulletin. We see that we're in the month of June, which is the power's imagination. Imagine that. Hmm. The disciple is Bartholomew. Color is light blue. Well, I got some blue in here. Some blue fish. Physical location is between the eyes, especially if you have blue eyes. Okay. <clears throat> Let's read our affirmation for that. Imagination is the facility of mind that images, forms, and shapes thought. What I envision, I call forth. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. I see only creative goodness. One eye, one sight, one vision. Unity, by golly. <laughs> and then our affirmation for Unity East Church. Unity East Church is a dynamic, prosperous church that welcomes and supports its members and guests spiritually. To the best of my ability, I prayerfully support Unity East Church with my time, talents, and treasures to keep our church viable. And so it is. Today, again, is uh, Blue Jean Sunday, June 7th. Uh, I did want to acknowledge that, uh, from my understanding, that uh, Kathy Green uh, got out a week or two ago, got a jump on us, and planted a lot of flowers along the entryway coming in through the, the back door there. Uh, but uh, I assume, I don't know, I'm not in charge of the flowers, so I'm not sure just what we have here today to plant and stuff, but stick around afterwards, and if we do, we'll get out there and get them planted so we can beautify uh, this place as a, uh, representing a temple to our Creator. Uh, upcoming, uh, on June 11th, we have the Aura and Chakra class, the photographer with the special equipment to be able to take a picture of your aura and, uh, and then analyze it for you. Uh, Linda, would you like to add something to that? Well, as Greg said, it's this Thursday. It's at 6.30 to 9. Um, it's a two and a half hour workshop and they take a picture of your aura and the picture shows your personality, your feelings, your, um, your history a little bit. Sometimes they can see your uh, spirit guides um, or your angels around you. And it's really a very interesting um, workshop. They take the picture and then they do one-on-one -on -one with the, each person to tell them about it. And they also take a picture and shows your main chakras that's up the middle of your body and they talk about those too. Uh, it's a really great workshop. Uh, I need the money by Wednesday for the class ahead of time, and there's a sign-up sheet, and if you need more information, you can talk to me after the service. Thank you. And while we're at it, before I forget, I know Marina has an announcement she'd like to make. Right. Um, hello. <laughs> so, uh, um, very quick announcement. Um, so, Mr. Tony Guliana, who is the director <coughs> of... Uh, um, of the Italian Opera Society. He opens his fantastic home to host a program that is a, a fundraiser and the program designed to motivate young artists to reach their musical goals. And it is a program that features students of um, Irina Mishura, who is a renowned mezzo-soprano. And um, <coughs> among the students, of course, is my daughter, Ayana. And uh, um, it's a program that will um, definitely be something very enjoyable because they're all saying the most famous arias um, out of the Italian opera. They're all fantastic. Um, they uh, have um, a very uh, 
a very um, well-known accompanist um, who, who comes from um, Ohio. Um, there's one song that I play, they asked me uh, to play for Yana, but um, other than that, it's a fantastic program. They had rehearsal yesterday. It was just out of this world. Um, I have flyers. I'm going to leave them uh, by the door. It is next week on Sunday. Um, yes. No, I'm sorry. It's Saturday, June 13th. Right, Saturday, June 13th at 730. I believe it is in uh, Northville. Where is Northville? Northville. Northville. West, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, that's it. that is to order tickets. No, the house is... Uh, Okay, yes, it is in Northville. Okay, um, there will be v valet parking, which is free, and then a really nice food afterwards. So if you're interested, then yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna be very, very fancy and kind of cool. So mm -hmm. you're all welcome. And I'll leave it up to the service, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, anytime you can help in fundraising for uh, students of music and the arts to learn is a great thing. Had somebody offered me uh, lessons when I was younger, music lessons, I could have learned to read music instead of just eating the sheet music. So you never know how it can help out. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, uh, of course, uh, the 21st will be uh, Father's Day. And uh, those of you that don't have a father, we'll pray for you. Or never had one, I should say. Uh, and uh, the, those that are fathers, they'll be honored on uh, June 21st, so make sure you come for that. Also, uh, we have recurring classes. Uh, Edgar Casey now is back in session on the second, fourth Sundays of the month, especially for you at home uh, watching streaming. Uh, that is at 11.45, held right after the Sunday service. So if you like, come on the second, fourth Sunday, join us here in the sanctuary, and then afterwards, uh, you can partake in the Edgar Casey class or just come to the, the Edgar Casey class itself. So we appreciate that. Also on Wednesdays, we have an ongoing class with the Tai Chi for the mature adults. It's a well-paced uh, program so that you get uh, good exercise, but at the same time without making it too strenuous uh, on anybody so we don't want people falling out trying to get healthy. Okay? I do that often. Uh, also, uh, Thursday's ongoing class, and I think there's about three or four weeks left in this one, is Open Your Mind to Prosperity, which is facilitated by Reverend Larry Hooks, uh, the minister here at Unity East. And uh, take advantage of that, because uh, obviously we can all enjoy more prosperity. More prosperity doesn't always mean more money, more moolah. It means that we're prosperous in every aspect of our life, whether it's relationships or just understanding. Wouldn't it be nice to be so prosperous and understanding that we had complete knowledge of everything? Ooh, that's a good idea, and it's scary, but it's a good idea. Okay, anything else that uh, we may have missed that needs to come before the people? No? In that case, let's just get comfortable, uh, get everything off our laps and stuff so that we can relax and enjoy our meditation. Remember the four, seven, eight. Breathe in four... Hold it seven, exhale eight.
allow your breath to go in easily. Exhale easily. Allow your thoughts to focus just on your breathing, nothing else. If your thoughts begin to drift away and think of something in particular, when you catch yourself, just take it back to your breathing, relax, and relax even deeper. I am God's son, daughter. I am complete, healed, and whole. Shining forth in the reflection of his love. In me is his creation. And it is guaranteed eternal life. In me is love perfected. Fear impossible. And joy established without opposite. I am the holy home host of God Himself. I'm the heaven where his love resides. Every breath I take reminds me that I am one with the creation and that creation itself is unconditional love joy peace harmony tranquility and truth As I exhale, I release all the things that are just the opposite. Fear, anger, guilt, frustration. All those illusions that I have put power into by a mistaken understanding of how my mind works. I would ask forgiveness for my errors, for my wrong-headed thinking. But you tell me that before I ask, it's already forgiven. That you put a part of yourself into me. And that as I focus on that, I will experience your true essence of love and joy. 
And for this I say thank you. I am totally grateful. And I thank you for the opportunity to be able to see this in me by allowing me to see it in my brothers and my sisters. For if you've placed it in them and I see it, I know it is in me, that you placed it in me, whether I can see that now or not. And I say thank you. Now focus on your breathing as we sit and contemplate in total quiet, total silence. The presence of pure joy. We say thank you to the Creator for all that is and all that shall be, now and forever. Amen. As we sing our response, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. Mommies and daddies always believed that their little angels are special indeed. And you could grow up to be anything. But who could? Imagine a king, a shepherd or teacher is what you could be, or maybe a fisherman out on the sea, or maybe a 
carpenter building things. But who could imagine a king? It was so clear when the wise men arrived and the angels were singing your name that the world would be different cause you are alive that's why heaven stood still and proclaimed one day an angel said quietly that soon he would bring something special to me and of all of the wondrous gifts he could bring who could imagine could imagine who could imagine a king Absolutely. What a duo, huh? Right? Thank you, Augustus. That was fantastic. Appreciate that. Very good. Well, I know uh, everybody's anxious to get out and uh, start planting flowers, so I'm going to make it a quick uh, lesson so that you can do that. And uh, one of the things about uh, unity, most of you are veterans for many years, if not decades, in unity teaching. So we tend to hear the same things over and over again and it kind of, like anything that gets repetitive, it kind of puts us to sleep a little bit. And so uh, what I want to do and what, what I usually try to do is ask some questions that get you to think. Okay, just th get you thinking a little bit different in a different direction, maybe something that you haven't thought of before. And that's exactly the purpose. If I ask you a question of something you already know, you've thought about and you know the answer to, what have you learned from me? Nothing. Okay, so the point is I want to ask you some questions uh, and get you to use your imagination and maybe uh, you'll find something new that you can build upon and maybe not. Maybe you'll think about what I said and say this guy is full of nonsense. <laughs> you know, he's wrong or I don't care or whatever, but that's okay. It's perfectly fine as long as the, the juices get turning and you begin to think. And at this point I need to put in my disclaimer that uh, Unity's Church North's management is responsible for the messages brought forth by the person on the platform. And as always, uh, your mileage may vary according to your particular use. So we'll leave it at that. Now, somebody come up to me uh, not too long ago, in the past couple of weeks, and asked me what religion Unity is. And of course, you know, the immediate response was well, Christian, it's Christianity. Uh, and, uh, and, we, and I explained, oh, it's practical. Christianity is applying the principles that Christ taught uh, into our lives to be able to do what Christ uh, promised uh, or was promised through Christ from God that we have the power to create our whole life our whole universe um, through our mind okay and that's a pretty big promise and to say that it's a religion I'm not so sure that that's the case I looked up religion and uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and it says the belief in a god or a group of gods and organized systems of beliefs. The ceremonies and rules used to worship a god or a group of gods and interest a belief or an activity that is very important to a person or group. So I said, well, it seemed, they seem to be hitting on belief a lot there. Okay, so I had to look up belief. Merriam-Webster says, belief is a feeling of being sure that someone or something exists or that something is true, or a feeling that something is good, right, or valuable, or a feeling of trust in the worth or ability of someone. 
So they're saying a belief is a feeling. And I got thinking about that. So wait a minute. A belief is something that the mind does that would hopefully incorporate some knowledge, maybe some perception, uh, in, in knowing something, not necessarily feeling something. But unfortunately, we've been convinced that <clears throat> when we feel something, which only the body can do, the mind doesn't feel, believe it or not. It's the body that feels. And when we follow that, we start down a path that doesn't lead us very well. It, it kind of goes to a dead-end rabbit hole, as they say. So the idea is to understand our mind a little bit better. And uh, when it comes to belief, I've said before, and I maintain that a belief is nothing but a practiced thought. Okay? And how do I know? Because when we're this little and you ask them questions or they make statements, it's unbelievable the things that come out, but it's something that they heard somebody say uh, or they heard somebody say it in a TV commercial or a radio commercial or in a, a kid's cartoon or whatever, they're repeating uh, what they said or what they heard. Uh, and if they repeat it enough, it becomes a belief, okay? Just like little Johnny when he jumped up and said, call Sam, okay? He had no belief in Sam and what he does. All he knows is what he's heard and he repeated it. And we do that too as adults. We've done it as kids, we've done it as teenagers, we've done it as young adults, we've done it through middle age, we've done it through mature age, okay? We, we have things inside of us, in our mind, uh, that has, that doesn't really serve us well in our goals and what we would really like to achieve. And for most of us, I think our, our objectives are to achieve real joy out of life, real happiness, uh, real fun, Okay, and yet we've got all these thoughts going on in us that uh, are just the opposite of that, create a lot of confusion. And so we kind of walk around with a split mind uh, trying to figure out, I want this, but this says I can't do it, or I can't achieve it, or if you try, it's going to be extremely difficult, and you probably won't anyway. That's a conflict going on in the mind. Uh, <laughs> in psychology and psychiatry, they call that insanity, or psychosis, uh, which means... Most of us are walking around a little bit psychotic, okay? I've been accused of that a few times, I can tell you. So <clears throat> what I like to do is try to go back to the beginning to understand things uh, on a simpler level because I don't have a complex mind and I don't have a complex thinking system or pattern. Uh, I'm pretty simple and I like things simple. So if I go back to the beginning, uh, it makes it easier for me to begin to understand some things, the way we work, the way our minds work. Because again, when I say we, I'm not talking about these bodies. Okay? In the Course in Miracles, they talk about the body being an illusion. Now it's real, right? it's here. But all the things that we have defined it as being is an illusion. Okay? We've defined it as being a male or a female, or this height or that height, or this color or that color. And those are all illusions. They do nothing to give you a better understanding of what it is. So I go back to the beginning. The beginning was, in the beginning, okay, God created, okay? We know that there's this energy, this source of energy out there. Um, you can call it energy waves, vibrations, whatever you want, God, source energy, all the other names that we use for, but it's out there. That's what existed from the very beginning since eternity, okay? well. If it's eternity and it's always existed, when did it start? When did that start? <laughs> okay, the human mind can't comprehend that. It doesn't make sense to us because we know from our uh, worldly thinking that everything starts, has a middle end, and it's gone. So that doesn't comprehend very well. But anyway, uh, in the beginning, there was this mind, this thing that created everything through mind. God wasn't a body. At least I was never told that uh, in the Bible. I've been told by many sources of which I thought were pretty good authorities when I was little, right? That they knew better than me, and they told me, you know, God is this person, and then if you mess up, he'll whack you a good one and get you back on a straight and narrow. Okay, so in our minds, we, that's how we perceive it. And, uh, but in the Bible, it says, God said, let there be light. Okay, it didn't say God took out his toolkit 
and put his leather gloves on and built light. So it wasn't a physical thing that God did, because God's not physical. God is the source of everything. And so thought becomes paramount. Thought is what creates. Okay? And so God created everything, and he created a couple of people. And he said, enjoy yourselves. You've got paradise right here. Anything you could ever want is, is here for you. And that worked fine until they decided that they wanted more. There was something else to want. You know, you got paradise, you've got complete joy, you've got unconditional love, you've got support, anything you want. And of course they had to think, there's something missing. Okay, we need to find it. And it was that part of their thinking which separated from God and saying that uh, there's, there's more, I want more of this. And so that part of our mind is called the human mind or human consciousness, or for simplicity, we'll call it ego. Okay, that part of the mind began to make things up. Okay, and when it did, the first thing that they did uh, after they partook of what they thought was a forbidden fruit, by the way, if it was forbidden by God, they could have never eaten it. Okay, because don't you think the mind that created everything for some reason lost its power to stop them from eating a, a piece of fruit? Of course not. So it w- really wasn't uh, forbidden uh, or it w- wouldn't have been done. But they, they partook of this fruit <clears throat> and then they hear God's voice. And they started three things. Trembled, uh, saw themselves nude. Uh, for those in real Lindsay, that means naked. And three, they felt guilty about it, covered up. They were ashamed. Okay, so here we go. We've got this part of our mind that we now claim is something different from God, and it's claimed three things right off the bat. Fear. They trembled when they heard the voice of God. So that was a creation of the human mind, of the ego, not of God. Uh, Realizing that they were a or claiming that they were a physical body, a physical thing. But that's what was created. And what was actually created was their mind, their spirituality. Okay, but now they say, we're a body now. We're not spirit anymore. Okay, God kicked us out. When in reality, God didn't. They just thought in their mind that they had been. Okay, so that body is an illusion They were never separated from God. They were never separated from spirit. They can't be because God placed a part of himself in each one of us. So how could we, and wouldn't it be pretty arrogant of us to think that we could tell God, I don't need you. I'm I'm a body. I'm cool. I can do everything myself. Okay, that'd be pretty arrogant. Okay. And then the last thing, the third thing that they uh, came up with was guilt. Okay, you did something wrong which was what? The first two things. You created fear and you created this idea that you're a body and not in the image and likeness of the creator. And so that's kind of a burden that we all end up carrying. Now, keep in mind the story in the Bible is just allegory. It's a metaphor. It's a parable. It's to help the human mind kind of get a grip on things and understand it a little better. Uh, And so that simple explanation for me helps me understand that their spirit which created me and which placed it part of itself in me. Then it's eternal. Okay? Never goes away. It was always there once it was created and will never go away. It'll be eternal. But then there's the other part of my mind that said, I'm not falling for that trick. <laughs> I've seen sleight of hand before. I'm not falling for that trick. I must be uh, fearful. I must be a physical thing. Uh, and I need to feel guilty over this, perpetually. Well, as time goes by, and we get into psychological understandings of how people work together and how our minds work together, uh, we come up with words like um, uh, transposing or projecting stuff that we carry around with us in our human consciousness, our ego, not our spirit. Okay, they're two different things, although they operate together and they're intermingled, okay? But for for the sake of demonstration and understanding, we like to say it's two separate things, ego 
in our spirit mind. Uh, and so the spirit mind has created all this illusional stuff, and, but it can never answer the question of what am I? Okay? Spirit knows what I am, and, and I know what I am. When I say I, I mean spiritual me, I know what I am. But the ego can't answer that. Because if it does, it more or less commits suicide. It says, if I admit that I'm just this figment of imagination that was told in that story of Adam and Eve, then what am I doing here? And we begin, our spiritual mind begins to go, that's what we've been wanting to know. What the heck are you hanging around here for when you have, you're just the opposite of what my spirit is. And if it's just the opposite, it means it's not love, it's fear. It's not forgiving, it's imposing its will on me. It's not loving, it's not uh, happiness, it's not joy. It's the opposite of that. And so if I listen to that, what am I going to experience? Because remember, thoughts held in mind produce after their... Right? So I'm listening to that, which is the opposite of what I truly am or what my spirit is. What can I expect to experience here on this planet? Nothing but the opposite of what I should be experiencing. So uh, one important thing uh, that uh, it came out or is ex expressed in uh, A Course in Miracles is that we identify with the body. Okay, uh, and we think the body has so much power that it tells us what to think. Okay, uh, the other day uh, I was being contemplative and I heard uh, and felt this uh, coming over me. I thought it was my conscience, you know, you're going to reveal something and tell me. Turns out it was just my stomach growling I hadn't eaten in a while. You know. <laughs> But we begin to, we listen to our bodies because now remember, we've already accepted, our, 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 um, our ego has already accepted the idea that we're a body, that we're this physical thing. And so we listen to it. And it tells us, uh, you know, you get a little older. And as you get a little older, uh, you know, hair starts changing color. Or as I say, uh, some men's hair turns gray and some men's hair turns loose. Uh, my, mine's doing a little bit of both. Uh, <laughs> But we begin to uh, listen to these thoughts that we're a physical thing and that our physicalness, our body, is telling us what we need to think. Okay, and we get a little ache and pain, and what do we say? Well, you know, you're getting a little older, aren't you? you know? Don't have as much energy as you get. Well, you're getting a little older. You, know? you don't heal as fast. Well, you're getting a little older. All those things that we associate with what the conscious or ego mind has taught us through the centuries. And we fall for it. But one way to get out of that is to acknowledge and know that the body doesn't tell the mind what to think. The mind tells the body. body has no brain. Well, it does. In my case, it does have part of one anyway. But it doesn't have a mind. The mind is what makes the decisions and says, so shall it be. Not the body, not the other way around. And when we heal this mind, get this ego part healed and out of the way, and we're listening to our spirit mind, the body responds. Because the body's responding to what the ego mind says, right? How do we know that? Because all of the uh, tests that they've done over the years and studies about uh, people that are constantly nervous, constantly in trouble. They have physical ailments that show up because of what? They're thinking. Right? It wasn't the body that got ill and then made the thinking go ill. It's the other way around. The thinking was ill and the body responded. So if I'm operating from spirit and the spirit says, your natural state of beingness is healed, whole, complete. And if I'm listening to that, what does this body have to do? It has to follow an order. Okay? Even if, and, and we had a gentleman a couple of thousand years ago came and demonstrated it, even if you change your mind that quick, the illness dis, uh, disperses that quickly as well. 
in a twinkling of an eye, the body can be healed. But the mind has to be healed first, not the body. And we think of it the other way around. If I can heal my body, then I'll feel better. I can think better. I can enjoy life better. I can be happier better. I can be prosperous better. But it doesn't work that way. Does that make sense? Am I making any sense? Somebody nod their head because I think you're all sleeping. I mean, you just got your eyes open. <laughs> okay. That's how unity started. And back to the question about what religion is uh, unity East or unity. And it started with Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. They both had physical ailments. And through the teachings of, in the Bible, from the Christ that was teaching them, they began to apply those principles. And guess what? Their physical ailments disappeared that were supposed to be terminal. Uh, Myrtle had TB. Back then, that was a, a terminal affair. She was healed of it. Okay. How? By applying the principles. So uh, they asked, the, the people around them said, how in the world did you do that? And so they began classes and giving instructions. How do you focus and use this part of your mind and ignore this part and let it just fade away into the sunset? And uh, people from around saw other people responding the same way. And they said, we want to learn that too. And before you know it, they're holding classes and that was the beginning of unity. It was never intended to be a church. Uh, it was never intended to be a religion. Okay, a, uh, would we say it was a belief? Okay. The only thing you need to believe is that you have a permanent belief instilled in you. It's called spirit. It's called the creator. And each one of us has that inside of us, and that's what we truly are. But we've taken, for lack of a better word, decorations from this side and kind of covered the whole thing and said, this is what we are. And that's not the truth at all. The truth is, each one of us is a part of God. And God is whole, healed, complete, and nothing but love. And that's what it, it uh, totally is. So that being said, I'm going to end it right there because I said we'll get out of here early. And my brothers and sisters, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And thank you. All right, uh, let's take our tithes and offerings. Do we have anybody here for the first time today at Unity East? I don't think so. That's all family here? Great. Yeah, let's take our tithes and offerings. See, uh, this is a typical example. When we use our ego mind, it says, whatever I give away, I've lost some ownership over it. No? So I can't have it anymore. Spirit says, whatever you give, you keep. Okay? And as a bonus, as a bonus prize, I'll multiply it. Okay? So when we give in love, when we give in spirit, when we give in truth, it can't help but come back to us, multiply. So as we say it together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray. Someone will come to show the way. I believe, 
I believe I believe above the storm the smallest prayer will still be heard I believe that someone in that great somewhere hears every word every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky then I know why I believe every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky then I know why oh, believe. Oh, I believe that spirit expresses through Augustus in that voice. Yeah, absolutely. When I said we have the two minds, okay, whenever we're experiencing and looking at creation and enjoying it, when we look at a little baby smiling when it's sound asleep, and yet, or when we see a precious flower, or when we hear an artist expressing, uh, that's our spirit connecting with spirit. And we appreciate that. It's very good. Heavenly Father, we ask you for the guidance, uh, the spirit, and the blessings to uh, take in this energy that is given from each of us here and bless it for, and bless its use to further the teachings of unity and to make a home, a spiritual home, for everyone here to find peace and comfort and rest. Amen. Okay, is there anything else I've missed? Anybody have an announcement or something that uh, we need to get to? If not, let's sing our song of peace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now as we leave forth from Unity's church, let us do it with one mind of spirit, expressing total love, peace, joy. And imagine that. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Oh, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Now hug somebody. Hug everybody. <laughs> hey, Michael. Hi. Appreciate you being here. I like it when you, you get up here and talk. Well, thank you. Nice change of pace. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> hey, buddy, how you doing? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Wonderful job. Yeah. That was good. And that, I meant that, too. Huh? When you when you sing, okay, uh -huh. spirit comes through you. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, it's not... I can see the joy yes, when you're yeah. singing. That's why. And, uh, yeah, that's it's, why it's wonderful. I know that. Yeah, thank you. You betcha. Hey, young lady. Hi there. Uh, are you? Oh. 